just for a second to the Trayvon Martin case, because I think that is what spawned the sort of desire for revenge, almost, on, from people on the right. And Heather, you had he people on the right. He got scot-free. What do they need revenge for? They, well, Boy, I don't just, understand. Just for the fact that African Americans dared to be outraged about the wow. Trayvon Martin case, about George Zimmerman not being arrested, I, there is a sense of vengeance on the other side. And one of the things that you did see, Heather, was Trayvon Martin portrayed as a thug and a criminal. There was one person who said he was a rabid dog that needed to be put down. And so you now have in the wake of that and because they're for whatever reason angry that people were upset this need to portray almost all black men as criminal almost inherently and one of the things that's now fueling that in the Chris Lane case is that you had this tweet by one of the alleged killers in which he said 90 percent of white people are nasty hashtag hate them so now we're off to the races all right folks I, I played that because um, uh, as I intro our next guest here on the Steve Malsberg Show. Welcome back. Um, we welcome in our next guest, who is, uh, of course, Bob Woodson, founder and president of the Center for Neighborhood Enterprise. And, Bob, it is great to talk to you again. You and I haven't talked in some time, but uh, great to have you back on, uh, on my show. Good to be here. All right, sir. You were a big hit yesterday at the RNC, uh, Re Republican National Committee, held a, an event to commemorate the uh, I Have a Dream speech, and, and you brought the House down um, uh, by all accounts, uh, you um, uh, gave a speech, and uh, it was rousing. And you know, you you basically you, you criticized a lot of black leaders uh, for their uh, obsession with Trayvon Martin, uh, making him into a martyr. That was Joanne Reed. We heard on MSNBC as we came into this segment. Uh, we've heard uh, martyrdom expressed by Jesse Jackson for uh, Trayvon Martin, also by uh, even Andrew Young. Uh, said that he's a martyr uh, earlier today on a show. Um, and you also said that African Americans have taken a backseat to gays and immigrants. So why don't you, you know, give us your whole take on where we are 50 years after uh, the King speech? Well, first of all, as I indicated, I was a participant not in the march, but certainly in the civil rights movement, having led demonstrations in uh, Baird Rustin's hometown of Westchester, Pennsylvania. Uh, and worked in the Urban League for, for five years. So I'm a, a, a solid veteran of the movement. But, um, but what has happened to the movement, it's really been hijacked and, and really uh, morphed from its original um, high plane. Now it has become uh, a race grievance uh, and an extension of the Democratic Party. And as a consequence, um, it, it's just whining and complaining all the time and, and, and to the detriment of the black community. And they keep invoking Dr. King's name. But Dr. King was a man who, first of all, who believed in challenge and debate within the movement. He also uh, was a man who was morally consistent. He was opposed to the violence of the Ku Klux Klan, but he opposed with equal vigor the retaliatory violence of the Black Panther Party. And Dr. King uh, stroke out against this. But this current crop of so-called black spokespersons are really polarizing this nation in a way that King never would have. And the very fact that only 27 young blacks die at the hands of non-blacks a year in America, and every six months, 3,000 blacks are killed by other blacks. So we have a 9-11 in the black community every six months. And, and yet, then they're going to tell us that the major problem facing black men today is the potential for being murdered by some non-white person. That's ridiculous. And the reason that they are so, uh, um, so, 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 so determined is because continuing to, to raise the race issue deflects attention the way from the more critical questions that are, are important to discuss in the black community. For instance, why, if racism were the major problem, why are so many black children failing in school systems run by their own people? Why are they failing in social service systems run by their own people? Yeah, no, and, the, the, yeah these are great, great questions. See, and, the, and so uh, Dr. King said that the highest form of maturity is the ability to be self-critical. And self-criticism and, and self-examination is what the black community needs more than anything else. Um, and, and so, uh, but we're never going to get there. In fact, it's very dangerous for the civil rights movement to continue to press this 
Trayvon Martin issue because it can provoke a backlash in the white community. What happens if a group of whites decide to take the pictures of this t white toddler who was shot in his face uh, in Georgia or the World War II veteran who was beaten, beaten with a death, flashlight, yeah. Beaten with a flashlight for $50 or this Australian student who was shot by what would happen if they collected these three names and asked for justice for for these folks and therefore if if the defendants went to trial for them to say they're guilty before they even tried we're talking I mean, yeah now you, you were talking to bob woodson founder and president of the center for neighborhood enterprise here on the steve malsberg show uh we got about two minutes left sir so i want to get to the point where you talked about how everybody's moved to the front of the bus environmentalists uh, um, yeah. uh, uh, uh immigrants gays uh but uh, but not necessarily as much right. african-americans go ahead this president has talked less about poor people than anyone else. Everyone else has priority in this new civil rights movement. Gays, uh, environmentalists, women, everybody, but you never hear talking about it. It's as if blacks who tilled the ground, planted the seeds, everybody else comes to the harvest. And low-income blacks and the blacks all, all, of all races are ignored in this current uh, climate. Why do you think that is? Well, again, it's because they are not a, a, a power group. It's all about money. It's about press attention. And, and so they are being marginalized. Even with a black president, huh? Uh, even with a black. Well, he has spoken less about poverty right. than any president in history. Right. Mr. Woodson, it is an honor and a privilege to speak to you. I, I, I would like to have you back again soon. And uh, I thank you very much for being uh, outspoken as you are and not afraid to say what you think. Thanks. I appreciate it. All right. Thank you. That's uh, Bob Woodson, founder and uh, president of the Center for the, for Neighborhood.